love you. Listen all over the place. Just begin to lift up your voice right now. Come on, just begin to lift up your voice. Come on, begin to lift up your voice. Hallelujah. Come on, just begin to open up your mouth right now. Come on, just begin to open up your mouth. No music, just your voice. Come on, no music, hallelujah. Come on, just begin to open up your mouth. Come on. If you know you come here to be revived, come on, just begin to open up your mouth. Come on, just begin to give him the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Come on, just begin to give him the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. As the atmosphere has already been set, even hours before we got here, but as it continued to be set, where the woman of God can have a way, come on, just begin to open up your mouth, give him the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. How many of y'all come for a word today? Someone say, I'm ready for a word. Hallelujah. As you're yet standing, amen, I have the honor and the privilege to introduce this woman of God who hails from Tyler, Texas. Somebody shout amen. amen. Sometimes I don't think we appreciate our own enough who have near 20 years of ministry experience. Kind of give somebody a shout glory. glory. Amen. You got over near 20 years of ministry experience. Amen. You got something to say. Hallelujah. Amen. You got stewards to tell. You got some things that God has put in you that can allow you to be delivered and set free. Can I get somebody to shout amen? amen? Speaking of a woman of God who's so submitted, but at the same time, she's so ferocious in the way, amen, she ministers the words to be sure you get delivered and someone shout set free. And I have the honor, amen, to introduce this Jew, amen, who's, who's this moderate woman of God, but at the same time, she's up to date with the trends in fashion. Can I get somebody to shout amen? amen? Who's anointed but yet submitted? Yes, yes. Who's down to earth but yet here, her, her heavenly father here up in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. We got the distinct honor and privilege, amen, to introduce this dynamic woman of God, our very own, Pastor Prophetess Latoya Harris. Come on, let's give a great round of applause as she comes. Someone shout hallelujah. Amen. Now give that praise to the Lord tonight. Come on, come on. Give that praise to the Lord tonight. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. Amen. Why don't you get out of your seat and hug two or three people and tell them, say, I'm glad you made it tonight. Come on, do it real quickly. Say, I'm glad you made it tonight. Get with someone you didn't ride with. Come on, you didn't sleep with last night. Come on. Amen. And tell them, I'm glad you made it to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Unscheduled. Amen. Not on your schedule, but it definitely was in the plans of God. Come on, love on them. Tell them, so glad you made it to the kingdom church. Amen. We love you with the love of the Lord. Glad you made it today. That's it. Love, 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 love. Amen. That's it. I'm so glad you made it. Amen. God is good. God is great. Amen. As you come back to your seat, just begin to praise him and thank him and give him glory today. Amen. Begin to honor him. Amen. That we're glad that you made it. Amen. Amen. To the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. You get back to your seat. Just clap your hands and praise God. Amen. While you're yet standing, let's thank God for our man of God, none other than Pastor Darius Harris. Come on, who has been preaching and teaching the word of God. Amen. And we are back tonight. We was here on yesterday. And amen. God moved by his power and his might. How many of y'all still feel the residue from yesterday's service? Y'all, I couldn't go to bed. I was up to probably after midnight. I was like, Lord, when is this going to leave? When is this going to lift? When is this going to get off me? I tried to get on Facebook. I tried to do some of everything. And the glory of the Lord was still up on me. Amen. And I am so thankful for what God is doing in this church. Amen. What he's doing in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. And that he extended the service tonight. Look at your neighbor and say he extended it just for you. Come on, find somebody else. If you didn't make it yesterday, say he extended it just for you. Amen. We're not meeting here for offerings. Y'all don't want to say amen. This is not about money. This is about souls. Amen. Because we could be at home, me and Pastor Harris, chillaxing, praise the name of the Lord, enjoying the little time that we do, uh, God allows us to have off, but we're here on assignment, and we don't take it lightly. Let's give honor to our bishop, Dr. Todd M. Hall. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. We honor the man of God wherever he is. Amen. We thank God for his covering and his protection. But there's a word from the Lord. And if y'all push me, I might preach tonight. So I, I might teach. I might preach tonight. Amen. 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 Look at your name and say she might preach tonight. Amen. Tell your other neighbor says she might teach tonight. So y'all got to come. Y'all got to come ready all day long as I was preparing, hearing from the God, wanted to know what he wanted to say. Because um, from yesterday, y'all, I got to probably four lines of my notes, like literally. I look back today to go back over and say, God, because I don't want to repeat. If God's not saying that tonight, why would I pick up something? Come on. So I wanted to make sure that this is what God wanted to say for tonight's service. And I look back over my notes and I probably got four lines in literally on yesterday. I don't know what happened after that. God spoke. Amen. Delivered us, set us free, done whatever he wanted to do. So we're going to complete the assignment on tonight. Amen. Good to see all of our guests and visitors. Let's give them a great God bless you. Thank you for coming to visit, amen, the Kingdom Church. And we talked about on yesterday, you may be seated if you can, we talked about on yesterday, uh, we talked about that lady named Harriet Tuckman. And we talked about, that's about as far as we got, how when she got free, she definitely didn't just get free and didn't tell anybody else. She went back and got those others who were still in bondage and she risked her life to pull them out. And so after the service on yesterday, the glory of the Lord was still up on me and I went back to the office and God began to share with me and show me visions and he said every time you as a leader go in in prayer or as, as even as an intercessor on the behalf of other people, that's you being a Harriet Tubman going back in through the underground railroad going back in through the fire to pull somebody else out and he said when people love you enough to go back in the fire y'all don't want to talk right and when people love you enough to go back through it just to get your little self out he said you are to value those people because they could have got out and forgot about you they could have got out come on i'm already preaching they could have got out and went on about their business so he said honor men and women of god who go in the fire for you because every time they go back in the fire they risk their own lives which leads me up to there are some trials that are not even your trials. There are some stuff that you go through that you wouldn't have had to go through. Come on. If it wasn't for who you was connected to. Come on. Because the person you was connected to was in trouble. God gave you enough strength to go back and pull them out. Come on. Out of the dungeon. Out of the dark places. And so we got to talk about Harriet Tubman and how God used her to bring people out. They call her a form of Moses. And I began to do some studying on Moses. So I want to talk about that on tonight. Amen. Because I was intrigued by Moses. I was intrigued. This is the other man, maybe, listen, the most talked about character in the Bible besides Jesus. And we want to talk about his failure, but we don't want to bring up his success. We want to talk about how he didn't make it to the promised land, that he was only able to go to the mountain and look on the top. But we didn't talk about his near-death experiences and how God delivered him. We don't talk about how he led a rebellious generation. And so people will look at your failures. I'm already talking, and they'll count you out because of your mistakes, not knowing that, amen, your mistakes is really what made you. Y'all don't want to say amen. Your mess up is really what caused you to be the man and woman of God of who you are. And if people keep looking at your mistakes, they're going to miss God. Y'all don't want to say amen. You can count my mistakes. I'm preaching early. Amen. You can count my mistakes all you want to. But I serve a God who knows how to erase them. I serve a God who knows how to put them in a seal of forgetfulness. I serve a God who knows how to say it's all right. Get back up. Try again. I serve a God who give you another chance after another chance. I serve a God who don't throw you away like people throw you away the first time you mess up. We serve a good God. We serve a merciful God. 
We serve a kind God. And so I want you guys um, um, to go with me as I journey through this life of Moses. I was so intrigued. And we want to talk about Joshua, but everybody is important in the Bible. You are important. Every character is important. Tonight we want to talk about Moses. And then because there have been some people assigned to lead you out. There are some people who are anointed to lead you out. And you do life, you got to find those people. You got to connect with those people who God has anointed to bring you out of a wilderness state. So let us talk about Moses just for a little bit. Moses was in the Bible, literally the first child to be abandoned in the Bible that was mentioned. He was the first that was mentioned that was abandoned. Y'all better say something. And abandonment does something to a person. Rejection does something to a person. Y'all not going to talk back to me today? It, abandonment, when someone leaves you, come on and walks off and just leave you and tell you fend for yourself. Y'all don't want to talk, right? Abandonment does something. So he was abandoned for a purpose. Y'all going to catch it in a minute. And some of y'all have been rejected for a purpose. God has something in his mind concerning you. And so Moses was abandoned and not just abandoned, but uh, Moses was put in the Nile River by his mother. Because she hid him for three months because there was a decree out that all of the little Hebrew boys, because they was growing mighty, that Pharaoh said that I'm going to take all of these boys and when they're born, we're going to kill them. And so Moses' mother was smart enough and wise enough to know that the hand of God was up on this seed. The hand of God was on this child. So she took Moses, if y'all don't mind me telling the story, and she put Moses in the Nile River. And when she put him in the Nile River, it was just so ironic as I began to read the scriptures of how in the world did Pharaoh's daughter, y'all don't want to talk right, the very king who was holding them captive, y'all see y'all don't, the very person who was oppressing the Hebrews, how this very person, uh huh, be the one the daughter end up with Moses. It could have been any mother, it could have been any person. Matter of fact, Moses was in a river where the, the basket could have flipped over. Y'all don't want to talk right. And some of y'all have been through near death experiences. Y'all don't want to say amen. But because of the hand of God and protection that was upon your life, it did not happen. He went through alligators and snakes. Let's use your imagination. A baby in a basket put in a Nile River. But guess what? My Pharaoh's daughter was outside bathing. Don't go no further. While she was outside bathing in the river, she sees a basket in the bush and she says, let me see that basket. She sends her helper, her assistant to go after the basket. Let me see, let you know how God divinely connects things and how your life and connections are so tight together that you didn't just meet your sister because you just met her. You didn't just meet your pastor just because you like them. Let me show you how God works in through divine connections from the day that you're born. Your mother is not just your mother just to be your mother, but God orchestrated. He orchestrated. He put every piece and every puzzle right in the right place for your life. And so they send this baby, and then Pharaoh's daughter gets this baby, and instead of her going to kill Moses, she feels sorry for the baby, and she takes the baby, and then she looks at her assistant, and he, the assistant says, well, do you want me to go and find a mother to nurse this baby? Y'all said I'm finna flip it. Y'all gonna catch it in just a minute. So what 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 happens here is uh, the um, assistant, the slave goes and back to the Hebrews and tell them there is. And she knew it was um Moses' mother, and she knew that Moses. into the camp and she comes back with Moses' mother. Y'all don't want to hear the Pharaoh's daughter turns around and say, I'll pay you to nurse this child. Okay, okay. I'm trying to get it get excited. Get excited. Get excited. So God told me to tell you tonight what you're willing to let go of on the back end. He'll turn around and he'll pay you. But you got to let go of it. Some of y'all mothers in here won't let go of your children. Let them go and let God have them. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, let them go and let God have them. Come on, they driving you crazy anyway. Give them to God and let God handle them. Put them in the river. Put them in the spirit of God. Put them in prayer. Put them in Bible study. Cover them in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. 
Christ. Out of all other, I'm glad we got word lovers and not emotional people tonight. Out of all of the mothers that could have picked up this child, Moses' mother is now able to go back and finish nursing her baby boy. She nurtures her baby boy. Moses grows up. Come on. And then now the mother again has to take the boy, the baby boy, and give him back to Pharaoh so she can save him or say, this is my son. See, some of us, we can't be blessed by God because when God gives us something, we don't know how to give it back. God bless you with more money, but you don't know how to give it back to God. Y'all don't want to talk right. He bless you with better relationships, but you don't know how to get your relationships and give it back to God. Uh huh. We got to learn that if God blesses us with more, that means that's the more that we've got to give. That's the more, come on, commitment we got to put in. Amen. He chooses those who know how to work with little, and he turns around and he says, you're going to be a ruler of much. Moses, who was abandoned, now he is a Hebrew boy being raised by Egyptians. So men will call him more like a mutt. He's mixed. His blood is Hebrew. But he's raised up in royalty. His blood is the blood of slaves. Y'all don't want to talk, right? But he's raised up in royalty. And God told me to prophesy to about 40 y'all today. That he said, I don't care where your past come from. He said, you are royalty. He said, you have to be, you have slave blood running through your blood, your veins. Uh, so I can teach you how to survive a desert. Y'all don't want to talk right. Uh, so I can teach you how to survive uh, for $20 a week. Uh, because then you'll be able to look back and say, where I came from. Thank God that you brought me away from a mighty, mighty long way. Uh, I can understand when the old folks used to say, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. No, never. No, never. See, some of y'all get blessed and you forget you get amnesia real quick. You forget about your bloodline. You forget about those who prayed and sacrificed for you. You forget about the prayer warriors. You forget about that small storefront church. Y'all don't want to talk right. You forget about the people who spoke into your life and prophesied and spoke over your life. Now he is mixed with blood of Hebrew now being raised by an Egyptian household not only that the household that he's under is his real blood family is oppressed by the place he's being raised Moses is mixed up is what folks would say Moses is messed up is what folks will say about Moses. Uh -huh. But then Moses begins to realize who he really was. And when he grew up, uh -huh, he stood there and he saw another Egyptian fighting up on a Hebrew, like whooping his butt real good. And all of a sudden, because what's in you going to come out, Moses killed the man uh -huh, that was fighting his blood family. Moses was a murderer. Amen. Let's talk about it. After Moses murders this man, they come back the next day, and then the two Hebrew boys are fighting. Moses goes and says, hey, what y'all fighting for? Y'all on the same team. I come to tell some of y'all, we on the same team. What y'all fighting each other for? We, we, we on the same team. We're on the same team. And then he throws back at Moses' his face. And he tells Moses. He looked at Moses and said, wait a minute. I know you ain't talking, Moses. Moses, aren't you that same man that murdered the man on, come on, on the other day? And you hit him in the dirt? Uh-huh. And then Moses got scared because he said, if this man knows what I've done, surely Pharaoh knows what I've done too. And then when he found out that Pharaoh knew it, says that Moses fled for his life. Moses ran for 40 years. In the desert, lost what we would say his royal status. He didn't care about it anymore. He's now in the desert being a shepherd boy. 40 years in the desert. Y'all don't want to talk right. And so we want to know how did Moses come on, help the 
children of Israel out of Egypt because he had experience with the desert. And some of us, uh, our best friend sometimes is a desert experience. And when you're in the desert, everything around you is dry. There's no water. Come on. There's no productivity. And sometimes I want to tell some of y'all tonight that if you learn how to survive a desert, you sure can survive a palace. When you learn how to survive a desert, come on, a desert, I know you can learn how to live in the royal palace. Tap your neighbor and say, I've been through some of the worst seasons of my life. Tell him, say, but I survived it. Tell him, say, I know what a desert feels like. Anybody in the church know what a desert really feel like? I'm talking about like by yourself, nobody can't help you, nobody can't pull you out. Uh huh. Nobody have no advice that's good enough and it seems like it's going in one ear out the other ear. Moses is in the desert for, for 40 years and, and not only that, he gets married. And I'm going to hurry up with the story, but I just, he gets married. And he gets married to these two girls, well, two women. And then he has kids in this place because Mo- Moses was getting ready to settle down. And like some of us, when God is calling us, we start trying to settle down. We start hiding. We start getting out of the presence of God. And God will still call our name and say what I said about you 20 years ago. It ain't changed. I still feel the same way about you. And so Moses then comes out and he has an experience. Y'all know what that was? At least one of these was the burning bush experience. And God begins to speak to Moses. And Moses begins to offer God at least five excuses like some of us. God, you can't use me because I'm a liar. God, you, you can't use me because I'm a cheater. God, you can't use me because I don't know how to talk well. Uh, Moses gave God five excuses and probably some more that he why God couldn't use him. I come to ask you tonight, what is your excuse that you keep telling God why he can't use you or why he can't bless you? Look at your neighbor and wake him up and tell him say, what is your excuse? Tell him say, what do you keep telling God your proclivities? Don't you know he knows you? Don't you know he knows your weaknesses? Don't you know he knows your He gave him lame excuses. Thank y'all for pushing me tonight. Why he couldn't be Israel's deliverer. Not surprisingly, God refused every excuse that he gave. As I told you yesterday, there is no excuse that you can use that will exempt God from saying that you don't have to praise him. There is no situation. I don't care if you on your dying bed. God still wants a praise out of you. I don't care if you can't talk. God still wants a worship out of you. I don't care if you don't even feel like it. God still wants a worship out of you. I have been hurting at times. Uh, so deep my heart broken at times. And God said I ain't caring about that right now. I still want to worship and a praise. Uh, let the tears flow and watch me heal you. Be sad and watch me deliver you. But nobody has an excuse not to worship. Our God. He gave excuses after excuses why God couldn't use him. And then God then tells him, He said, Well, you know what? I can't talk too good. He says, Well, you know what? Let me help you out. Let me, let me, let me help you out. Since you want to use that you can't talk real good, let's call on your brother Aaron. So let, let, let's let Aaron talk to you for to the people. So now what's your excuse? So when God removes our excuses for why we should worship and why we should praise God, then I want to ask you again, what's your real reason? When he actually gives you an existence and he actually gives you the help that you need and you still don't come to church and you still don't be faithful and you still don't read your Bible and you still don't be consistent. What else can God do to have you to do what he called you to do? Thank you, church. And so what happens is God says, I'm not listening to nothing you got to say right now at all. I'm going to give you Aaron. Aaron stands before the people on the first time around. And he's like, after this, Moses, you got the job. And some of y'all reason for not doing what God called you to do. Your number one reason is fear. Y'all don't want to say amen. I don't like standing before the people. Y'all don't want to say amen. Y'all looking at one of the most used to be fearful people. I, you couldn't catch me with a microphone. You couldn't catch me doing anything that was out front. But I serve a car who said I'm going to choose you anyways. Go scared. Hallelujah. Tap your neighbor.
neighbor say, go scared. Go scared. Say, do what he told you to do even with fear. Come on, Tom, say, do what he told you to do even without the results. See, the problem with this generation is we don't move until we see manifestation. And you're going to miss God because faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things that are not seen. So you're going to miss God because you don't have faith for the things that you cannot see. you got to move even when you don't see God. you got to do what he told you to do even when people don't like it. you got to preach the Lord in season and out of season. you got to do what God told you to do whether you got partners or not. you got to do what he told you to do whether your mama or your daddy agree with it or not. Who am I talking to in this place? You're not exempt from doing what God has called you to do. And for some of y'all that don't even realize it, I want to tell you that everybody is not going to agree with your assignment. I thought I'd have more amens. Everybody is not going to agree that God anointed you. Uh -huh. Everybody is not going to be happy that God chose you. You ain't nobody. You a little Hebrew boy. Uh -huh. You just got in the palace just by mistake. But I come to tell the devil, baby, where I'm standing right now, it's not a mistake. I got somebody to open your mouth and say, I'm not a mistake. Come on, shout it again. I'm not a mistake. Come on, shout it one more time. I'm not a mistake. Come on, Tom, say, I'm right where God wants me to be. I got to interject this because on yesterday, sometimes we can put so much pressure on ourselves to get more, to do more. Am I talking to anybody? Have more. Lord, I messed up. Can I do more? What else can I do? And we get in this rat race, Nisi, of trying to get more and more and more that we tire ourselves out. And the Holy Spirit told me on yesterday evening, he said, let me calm all your fears. And let me tell you, you're right on time and you're right on schedule and you're right where I want you to be. So I come to tell y'all tonight that you're right on time, that you're right on schedule and you're right where God wants you to be. Sometimes you can feel like you miss God. Anybody ever been there before? Sometimes you can feel like you've done something so bad that God be like, oh, Lord, forget you. you ain't, it ain't coming around no more. You, you, you done messed up. You done messed up. But don't you know God factored your mistakes before he called you? I'm talking to a group of called, anointed, chosen people. Called by God and chosen. Amen. But none of those excuses work. He had to stand before the congregation anyways. And, 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 and why did God choose someone to communicate who had what they would suggest a stuttering problem? How can we hear from someone that be like, get out Moses! It goes to prove to y'all that think that God chooses perfect people to lead. God chooses the least likely person that you would call that would never succeed. And he says, I'm going to show my glory through this person that you make in front of. I'm going to show my glory through the least likely person. I'm going to show my power through the person you cause in judgment upon. I'm going to show you that I can anoint the least and they become the best. Let y'all think about that. He anointed a man who couldn't speak. He anointed a man that was Hebrew, raised up, come on, by Egyptian. He anointed a, um, a man who was a murderer to lead a whole nation and to lead them out. See, our perception sometimes is wrong because we cut people off at their mistakes and don't see that God is still working on me. I wish I had the right church tonight that will open your mouth and at least talk to someone beside you and tell them, say, God is still working on me. Come on, tell them, say, don't write me off. Y'all ain't seen by the right neighbor. And I don't want to talk to you. Talk to someone behind you and tell them God is still working on me. Come on, tell them, say, don't write me off yet. Come on, tell them my story is not over yet. Y'all making me preach early. God is still working on me he's still working on me there are some people right now I know uh -huh, if they would have stayed a little longer around in your life uh, that they would be reaping some of the benefits that you have but they left too early because they cast judgment upon your mistakes but you don't know why people do what they do you, you, you don't have a clue of how they was raised. 
You don't know why, how they've had to make a decision that they made. So don't you ever make fun of a homeless person. Just an example. Because come on, someday you can be homeless. Don't you make fun of people who are down, dump, dumpster diving and have to get in the dumpsters and get their food out. Don't you walk past a person uh -huh, that got clothes on their buggies and they got full of stuff looking like they don't have nothing and you snap your nose up. Gotta snatch your car. He'll snatch your house up. Because guess what? You ain't perfect, baby. And God So that's why I speak to the janitor and the president. Y'all don't want to say amen. That's why I speak to the CEO and the McDonald's employee here. Because you never know who people are going to turn out to be. And not only that, if they work at McDonald's for 30 years and die at McDonald's, it ain't your choice to say nothing about it. It's still a person. It's still a human being. Do I got anybody with equal rights up in here? Some of y'all ain't nothing but destiny hoppers. What I mean by that destiny connection. Wherever you think you can connect, that's where you try to eat at. But let me tell you something. I've seen God take a person with nothing and turn around and make them out of something. Let me tell you something. That person was me. I've seen God take a person out of poverty. Y'all don't want to talk right. And cause them to live in prosperity. Don't you ever write nobody off. Don't you ever write nobody off. Tell your neighbor again, say, don't write nobody off. Come on, tell them again, don't write them off. I've seen people that didn't, did I felt like didn't like me, didn't pay attention to me to write me a check. Y'all don't want to talk right. And who you trying to write off got to write a check for you. Y'all don't want to say amen. I just have to help y'all. Who you assume? Who, who you assume? I told y'all that yesterday. The enemy tries to keep us from divine connections. He distorts us and put everything else in our way thinking that that's better than what he has already shown us. Moses, let's get back to this. Moses has that experience, that burning bush experience. God said, I'm not hearing none of your excuses. You're still going to lead the children of Israel out. I don't care what you got to say. Not only that, Moses was the original snake handler. He had several accounts that he, where he was handling snakes. And the reason this generation is not powerful is because we don't know how to cast out demons. Okay. So we call what a demon, we call it an issue. So y'all don't want to talk right. My issues. No, no, no. Let's call it what it really, really is. And that, there is a difference between your issue and, and a demon. Yeah, you know, that, there's a big difference. But we, we try to name it other things because we don't have the power to cast it out. Y'all don't want to talk right. Some stuff you don't counsel out. Some stuff you got to cast out. I'm going to say it again. And I said it last year. Some stuff you don't counsel out. I ain't talking to no demon. I rebuke it. And you got to get out of there. When you don't have power, Hallelujah. you don't know who you are. Amen. We cover up things with entertainment. I'm going somewhere. We cover it up by massaging the people instead of causing them to be delivered. We cover it up, come on, by entertaining you, come on. But we don't come to entertain you. We come to allow the word of God to work in your life, that you'll be delivered and that you'll be set free. Uh -huh. No demon shall feel comfortable in the presence of God. Y'all don't want to talk right. Uh -huh. Y'all don't want to talk right tonight. Yes, you should feel uncomfortable. Yes, you should feel like you should change. Yes, you should feel like you should live better. Yes, you should feel convicted. If you're doing something wrong, it's not the make you feel good. The word, y'all don't want to help me preach tonight. Y'all just looking at me. The word is not supposed to massage you. The word is not supposed to say keep sinning. The word is to challenge you to live better. I'm afraid if I can go somewhere and they tell me and pat me on my back and say it's alright, keep sinning. What if I don't wake up tomorrow and I open my eyes in a burning hell? What if I don't make it to the next day? That's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's saying that Jesus is on his way back. And we got to get it right, church. That gospel is old to this new generation. And let's go home. It's, it's, it's an old gospel. But Moses 
was a snake handler. He had to be taught. And Jesus asked him, the Lord God asked him, Moses, you acting all weak. But what's that in your hand? Tell your neighbor, say, what's that in your hand? Come on. You, you, you don't, you, you're asking God for more, but God told me to ask you tonight, what's in your hand that you're not using? What has he given you that you're sitting on? What types of gifts and talents uh, has God anointed you with and you're not using them? You're asking God for more money, but what are you doing with the money that's in your hand? You're asking God, come on, for more members, but what are you doing with the members God has already given you? You're asking God, come on, for more, but God told me to ask you, Moses, what's in your hand? Use what's in your hand because what's in your hand and your faith that touches God, it will become multiply. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, what's in your hand? You got enough to work with whatever God is giving you right now. You don't need nothing else. I'm going to tell you again, you don't need nothing else. God, I need more money. No, you don't. Because the more money will come on the next assignment that you need. But what you have right now is enough to get the job done. Give me a little bit more volume, please. The snake, Jesus, God tells Moses, pick up the snake. Y'all know he was scared, right? Uh, I don't know too many people who are not scared to pick up a, a snake. He picks up the snake. The snake turns into a staff. All right. But it didn't turn into a rod until he got it in his hand. Amen. See, See, some of y'all, you are afraid to pick up the thing that's bluffing you. We all have had fear. So what we do is we ignore what we can't change. He picks up this serpent. Serpent turns into a rod. This same rod he stretched over the Red Sea. I come to tell you, you're asking God for more to work with, but God says it's already in your hand. If you would just trust me, listen, and obey, I'll cause doors to open that you thought could never open. I'll cause ways to be made that you thought could never be made. If you just open your ears and your eyes to listen to the voice of God and be obedient and follow my every, his every command. Moses also called leprosy. Y'all don't want to say amen to this. When Moses called leprosy, come on, the snake that was in his hand, God told Moses, place your hand in, in your cloak. Put it in there. He put his hand in his cloak, pulled it back out, and it was like leprosy. God then healed him. My question to you is, how many miracles does God have to do for you for you to believe? How many times does God have to bring you out for you to believe that God is God? How many times are you going to have to pay your bills for you to believe that you should not be worried about bills? You worried about them last year? You worried about it the year before? 2020? You should not be worried about bills because you've seen God make a way. You've seen God work miracle. You've seen God come on, turn the snake into a lie. You've seen God feed you when you are hungry. What else does God got to do to make you believe him? What else he got to do? What other tricks God got to turn for you to be faithful? How many times he got to heal your body for you to be faithful? You can imagine these Israelite people they were enslaved come on, from Egypt and Moses having to bring them out of Egypt into a promised land. Amen. They were slaved and slaved in their minds, which means that some people, I don't care how much money that they get, they'll never be wealthy because it's not about the amount of money. Y'all don't want to talk, amen? But it's about a mindset. It's about a perception. And some of us, we're looking at our neighbor because we think that they've been dealt better cards, a better hand in life. But I come to tell you, we got all the same 24 hours. We got seven days a week. And it's not about what you were dealt. It's about what you do with the hand that you were dealt. It's not about who raised you. It's not just about, come on, what you've been to, but it's about what you, come on, come on, what you can make out of a bad situation. And there's some people, and you complaining about what you're going through 
right now. But there's some people who wish they had your hand. There's some people who wish they had your man. There's some people who wish they had your woman. Now you complain, y'all don't want to say amen. You complain about your kids. You complain about your finances. But there's somebody wishing they had what you have. Because they would show you what to do with your hand. There are some people that was built a bad, bad hand in life. But they turned out to be some prosperous, great, anointed people. So we have no excuse. I don't care who raised you. I don't care who your daddy is. I don't care if they was there, if they was not there. Your life does not depict upon what you went through. But it depicts upon how you made good on the hand that you was built. I got somebody to look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to make good. On the hand I was there. I could sit back and say I got 14 miscarriages and, and give up on God and give up on my name. And y'all don't want to talk right. That's just one thing. I can say I have that certain things happen to me. But guess what? I can't lean on what happened to me. I gotta take some that and say I gotta grow from every hit. I gotta grow from every knockdown. I gotta grow from every lie. I got to grow from it. Tell your neighbor, say, I got to grow from it. Tell somebody else, say, that almost killed me. Come on, say, but at the same time, it built me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? That almost took me out. Y'all don't want to say amen. I almost quit church. Who am I talking to? I almost quit on God. Who am I talking to? I almost walked out my calling. Who am I talking to? I almost left my destiny on the table. Oh, my God. You know the devil is after you when he's after your salvation. I'm going to say it again. You know the devil is after you when he's after your salvation. He don't care about you going to church. But if he can get you to go to church and stop believing in the word of God, then he got you. He wants you to stop believing in your car. He wants you to stop believing the promises of God. But I'm so glad that I kept on moving. Anybody is so glad that you kept on moving. Hey, 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 hey. How many times could you have quit? You can think about it. But I'm so glad that you kept on moving. Somebody ought to praise the name of the Lord. These people were trained and beat into submission. So people who have beat been beat into submission, when they finally get free, y'all don't want to say amen. They ain't finna let nobody else tell them a simple hand raise. Y'all don't want to talk right. I'm out the door. Y'all, let me bring it home. People, y'all don't want to say amen. People that's been abused physically and, and, and mentally and verbally. You can look like you finna say something stupid. Y'all don't want to say amen. And they out the door. Look like. It's certain ticks y'all don't want to talk right. So, so, so a slave mentality to try to tell a person who's been enslaved that they can actually be free, that takes a lot of work. Uh, to tell a church that's used to living paycheck to paycheck, y'all don't want to talk right. And to tell them that they don't have to live like that and they ain't got to have no money. They just got to stop spending it at McDonald's and they just got to stop spending it in the high store. And they just got, y'all don't want to say, they got what they need to tell Moses had a hard job Amen. to bring people who were enslaved out. He was the mediator and sometimes you need God and I'm so glad that Jesus stands on the right hand of the Father and he makes intercession for us. But sometimes you need a physical person to stand between you and God and beg God. God don't kill him. I know they messed up but God's part of life. Y'all don't want to say amen. God give him another chance. If I times I went to God on the behalf of some of y'all. Y'all don't want to say amen. God, give them another chance. Don't embarrass them, God. Don't pull the covers off of them, God. Lord, show your mercy and your grace. Lord, don't explore them, God. Lord, y'all don't want to say amen. Please, Jesus. 
I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all on live, worship God. You on streaming, worship God. Listen, I had an encounter a few weeks ago. The glory followed me all the way to the house and I was still in the glory. Pastor Harris had to help me get in the car. But I had an intercession one-on-one -on -one with God concerning someone very dear. And God begins to share with me his complaints concerning, y'all don't want to talk about, this particular person. And he begins to say out of my mouth, he began, I want to show y'all just an experience. He begins to say, they are a liar. They are a liar. I just started, yeah, they are a liar. They are a liar. He said, and a liar will not tear it in my sight. Y'all don't want to talk right. He said, I hate liars. Pastor Harris was just looking. Oh my God. Hallelujah. After which, I said, God, I heard what you said. I said, but God, please give him another chance. Y'all don't want to talk right. I said, God, please spare the life. Y'all don't want to talk right. God, please give him another moment. Y'all don't want to talk right with nobody in here. I said, God, please do it again for him. Y'all don't want to talk right. Lord, please. Y'all got to have intercessors. You got to have leaders. You got to have pastors. You got to have prayer warriors who know how to stand in the gap on your behalf. Will you make stupid mistakes? Y'all don't want to say amen. Because you're going to make some. We're going to make some. I'm glad I got somebody that can go on my behalf. That when I lose my mind and go off and do stuff that I wasn't supposed to do, that somebody can stand in the gap. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That the prayers of the righteous avail it much. Baby, you didn't get together on your own. You didn't just snap your fingers and things came together. Somebody pray for me. That's the first form of pride. If you think you prayed yourself into a place, somebody prayed. I'm sorry. Prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time to pray for me. Not pray on me, but pray for me. Not talk about me, but pray for me. Now spread my business. Who am I talking to today? But pray for me. I don't need you gossiping. I need you praying. I need a Moses in my life. Y'all don't want to talk right. I need somebody that when I act a fool that they can go to God on my behalf. Somebody prayed. Prayed for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And because we don't verbally hear people pray, you don't know what people do when they go home. You don't know when they have your name to run across their face. You don't know who they praying for in their secret times. I know there was times, come on, that I didn't feel good in my body. And all of a sudden, five to ten minutes later, I could feel energy begin to come. And, I, and there was times I would preach. And I say, God, I need some more energy to preach. And I would feel the prayers of the righteous that avail it much to begin to pray. Yes, I pray. But I thank God for those who pray for me. Moses was a stuttering intercessor. God loves something about Moses. What he loved about Moses is what most people don't have is he loved his humbleness. So he was one of the most humblest men. Which means that he wouldn't take God's glory. And there are some people who can't be anointed. They can't go to the next level. Because you got too much flesh showing. When you get up and you minister the gospel. When you get up and you stand before people. It ain't about you. They ought to be able to see the glory of God upon you. They ought to be able to see the power of God in you. They shouldn't be looking at you and lusting to sleep with you unless they got problems. They ought to be able to see Jesus. Jesus. Someone shout they ought to be able to see Jesus on you. This is what this revival is tonight. Is get me get get all that other stuff out the way and give me Jesus. I didn't come to see you perform. Y'all don't want to talk right. I didn't come to see you dance. I didn't come to 
see you do what you do. Just give me Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and say, just give me Jesus. Lord, help me tonight. Moses now has to lead a rebellious generation. I don't know how he did it, but he did. He went to Pharaoh several times. Let my people go. He had an assignment. Let my people go. And I'm standing on the behalf of some of you all that the enemy got your stuff. And he think he gonna mess you up. Uh, and he think he gonna push you backwards. Uh, I come to tell you tonight that I'm going on your behalf to say, let my people go. Let their kids go. Let their families go. Let their loved ones go. Someone shout, let it go. Shout it again, let it go. It's been happening. Every night it's been. <sighs> the prayers of our ancestors are working. It's working. Someone shout it's working. Moses gives them Pacific assignment. Y'all stop so I can preach. To get the people out from where they were. I come to let you know tonight that you didn't go through all of what you went through for nothing. That God has a plan in mind for you. Every little integral part of your life, God is getting ready to use. I wish somebody, it's going to be explosive, Elder Jones. Some of y'all think, God, why did I have to experience that? Why did I have to, why me? Why did I have to go through something like that? He said, because I'm getting ready to blow your mind and there's so many people who are attached to your testimony. There are so many people who are attached to you coming out. God said, I made a bet on you that can you make it through the worst season of your life. I found somebody behind you and tell them, say, I'm coming out of this thing. They didn't hear you. They didn't hear you. Tell somebody else, say, I'm coming out of this thing. Y'all pushing me early. Come on, y'all. Help me out tonight. Find somebody behind you because I feel five people ready to have church. And tell them, say, I'm coming out of this thing. Well, Pastor Latoya, what is this thing? I want to tell you, whatever you want to put in the word of thing, that's what it is. Whatever your thing is, God says you're getting ready to come out of it. And when you come out this time, you will not return to bondage. I'm setting my people free. Come on, children of Israel. Let's get to Canaan. Look at someone behind you and say, get out of there. Come on, tell them it's time. Y'all work me. Come on, to come out of there. Y'all got to help me tonight. Numbers, the 13th chapter. And the 17th verse. Because y'all not going to push me without me reading this verse. And it says, and Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan. I come to tell you that your next place that God's getting ready to send you, you're going to have to go spy it out. If you said you're going to get a house that looks real good over in the Cascades, y'all don't want to talk right. If he said he's going to bless you real big, then why haven't you went and scouted out the land? Why haven't you rolled through the neighborhood? Why haven't you drove up on the car lot? Why haven't you went by and looked at your next destination? The Bible says that Moses said, I need some spies from each tribe of Israel. Twelve of y'all leaders to come up out of there and go to the land that's flowing with milk and honey. And when they went to the land, they began to look around and they saw all of the produce and they saw all of the blessings. But God you're not going to get it until you go look for it. You won't possess it until you go try it out. You won't have it until you drive it, until you look at it, until you name it and you claim it. 
uh, until you put your faith on it uh, and put it into action. Uh, so Moses said, uh, I'm giving y'all 40 uh, days uh, to go over uh, and spy out the land. Uh, is there anything uh, too hard for God? Uh, is there anything uh, that God cannot do? Uh, is there anything uh, that God can make happen? Uh, Oh, no. 
name uh, and say power. Say power. Say I got. I got power. I got power. Shout yes. want to hear me tonight. It was so great and mighty. The next thing that God's getting ready to do in your life, I ain't true. The next thing that he's getting ready to place in your face is something that is big. But I come to ask you tonight, are you ready for the big? Are you prepared for the big? Are you ready for what God's getting ready to do? Because what he's getting ready to do if he's about to interview you uh, for a big, uh, a big blessing. Uh, the Bible says uh, that the grapes uh, were so big uh, that it took two men uh, to carry the grapes uh, on their shoulders. Uh, God told me to tell you, uh, your next blessing, uh, you're going to need a partner. Uh, y'all don't want to say amen. Uh, you're going to need a partner uh, to help. Out, huh? Cause you can't carry huh? this next vision huh? by yourself. Huh? You can't carry huh? this next thing huh? by yourself. Huh? You need partners huh? to partner with you. Huh? Cause it's big. Huh? I dare you to prophesy huh? over yourself huh? and say, self, huh? I prepare uh, myself huh? for something huh? real Say I mastered uh, the small uh, and big uh, is coming to my house. Uh, big uh, is coming to my church. Uh, big uh, is coming to my youth. Uh, get up on your feet uh, and lift your hands uh, and give God praise. Uh, Cause big. 
work, if interviewing you, big scholarships, big houses, big anointings, big favor, you don't need money, because favor is going with you, what you can't pay for, God says favor, I couldn't pay for it. Thank you. 